Good morning, guys. <laughs> Today is the day that we will bring our truck to Austria. We'll walk up really early, 4.30 or something like that. It's still 5 and something. Because then Matteo would sleep we are like 4 hours. We need to drive it 4 hours to get there. Matteo is with Fabian on the truck. And I am driving with Fabian parents' car behind him because we need a way to get back home. The truck will stay there for two and a half months more that they can then put the box on it and finish the last parts of the project. It's very exciting and today we will introduce to all of you proper the company Krug because they have like an in-house trade show and yeah, and it will be nice because you can see a little more about this amazing company. I am Isabella and I am from Brazil. This is Fabian and he is German. We've been overlanding the world with our home sweet home Frank the Tank for the past almost four years. And together with our son Matteo and our two lovely dogs, Uni from Spain and Basco from Germany, we are living even for before. Subscribe and welcome to the family. Ben, I hope that you have fun. Here we are at the show uh, at Krug Expedition. And uh, yeah, we told you already in our last video that we will drop our truck so this is also what they can do they can do uh, it's called project rhino and project rhino is about uh, buying a truck basically for overland the starters like we were five years ago and this truck is exactly our Tego 1023 what we had before and uh, yeah you can have it uh, with 7.5 tons so you basically wouldn't need a license in Germany, like the big truck license. Krug. Why we decided for Krug is, uh, yeah, they do, in our opinion, that's just our opinion. They have a nice design. They're nice people. They're a younger company. They're flexible when it comes to, you know, what we do, our job and YouTube. And they saw that we are driving five years already in an Atigo in our old B-Mobile. They, they are specified on trucks specifically. So from 7.5 tons up to no limit, I guess, you can order everything. And uh, yeah, now we had Matteo, it's a different game. We are here in Europe, we had time to switch. So we sold our old one. You can see everything in our YouTube channel here. Um, yeah, so I think enough said. So enjoy the show. I hope I can film something more. Also, this one is an option. You can drive uh, six by six from MIN. This is a chassis. Uh, let's talk quickly about the chassis that they have here. So this is the MIN. It's uh, actually a double cab. So for bigger families, we are now three people. We decided for one and a half. But if you have more kids, maybe you want that version. And this is a six by six, like you can see. Another Arox, that's also an option. And with this Arox, it's the 1840. It is 18 tons chassis, 400 horsepower. And I guess it's the wheelbase 4.5. And uh, yeah, this is also an option. With a six meter cabin, you are definitely good to go. And with the weight, oh, you shouldn't go above 16 tons. So ours probably will have 14 tons total with everything full. So this is a good option. Then here we have another Arox, the 2053. It's the 53 says 530 horsepower. It's also four and a half meters wheelbase. And uh, yeah, this one has the optional uh, digital mirrors already. This is exactly ours, just different tires and a different tank. The rest is pretty similar. I like the hooks in front. I have to ask if I can get those. <laughs> Let me not forget that. Here we have an X cap. They cooperate with Krug. And uh, this is pretty cool. 
they take the Steyr, or in America they're called LMTVs, and they put also boxes on the back. This wheelbase should be four me. I'm not sure. I'm hopefully not lying, but it should be four meters, and the box is probably five meters or something. I'm not sure though. But this is a very nice model. I just met him. His generator is running. That's why it's so loud. He also is driving this one. He's very satisfied. And he came to the show to just do a service, normal maintenance, which is uh, also offered by Krug. When you leave with your new vehicle, they ask you politely, maybe you want to come back after half a year, just to check if everything is cool. And boom, there it is again. Of course, I love this the most. No offense to all the other people, but you always like yours the best. This is the living gift 4x4. It's an Adox 2033, 20 tons, 330 horsepower. We have the Michelin XTL 14R20 because never change the running system. We had the XTLs before in our truck. We have a wheelbase of 450. Hi guys, we are here. Here we have Dimitri. Dimitri is uh, well part of the Krug family. It's a family business. He's actually the son of the, the owner and he is responsible for sales and he's also making sure he's the link thing, what I understood in my project between sales and production. You basically yep, give, correct. give basically the, my needs mm -hmm. to his team and hopefully his team understands him. It's a big engine, it does a lot. We already ran 1,500 kilometers on it mm -hmm. because we did one thing already. We are not having a generator anymore. We have an alternator. So you saw that in another video. We talked about some things on the frame and Dimitri is gonna say why we changed those things on the frame and how how this truck will look when we pick it up at the Abenteuer Allrad in 2021, this year in October. So let's go to the chassis and Dimitri will explain what we changed. What's gonna come on the truck and how it's gonna look like? Yeah, so uh, first about the preparations so that were done after factory. Yeah, so the problem with um, uh, cargo trucks, they um, they are not adapted to expedition uh, mobile use uh, in terms of uh, uh, different parts uh, all over the frame. Yeah, so some parts are outside the frame and we, uh, we need this. Uh, uh, part clear for the cargo boxes, you know, for uh, entrance ladder. Yeah, so we have when we get the truck from the factory, we have to do a lot of work, uh, you know, of moving uh, all the essential parts of the truck out of the way. Yeah, so most of the parts go inside the frame. This side will have the uh, box for the entrance stairs right under the door, then the cargo box, then we have this uh, space for a bigger cargo box for the uh, that serves as a housing for the external kitchen if we go over to this side this, um, on this side we uh, had to make um, more room for um, a bigger tank because you can't get uh, a tank this big from factory uh, and uh, we have to remove uh, the stock tank and uh, have the bigger one yeah, and uh, still keep it um, compact. That's why we have to move the air dryer, the um, air bottles, the brake receivers inside the frame. So everything is uh, neat and compact outside. Yeah. Yeah, so this uh, beautiful bumper you see here. This beautiful bumper. I had my truck for, I don't know, 1,500 kilometers now. Uh -huh. The first 300 kilometers I went a hill off-roading and I mm -hmm. hit this already. So this is already broken on a brand new truck. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, you don't have a departure angle at all with this bump bumper. Yeah, So it's a requirement of the certification office. So you have to have it when you are driving uh, German highways, yeah, but uh, when you get uh, on the road, you have to be flexible, yeah, so you need a, a, a version that you can tilt up, exactly. yeah, to have an uh, increased departure angle, yes. and uh, we will change this bumper to a version that can be tilted up horizontally, and uh, you can do the whole road. 
it is still for the German people out there. I'm German as well. It's still mm -hmm. TÜV approved, uh, mm -hmm. but it's a flexible one. So we had that on our old truck too, and it is definitely whoever builds a truck out there, you gotta have it because that doesn't mm -hmm. help. You have the biggest off-road machine, but you limit it by that. So yeah. this is really exactly. important. There we go. Now we switched with Dimitri to one existing truck, but we want to show you the frame, right? Yeah. Subframe. Yeah. So subframe is um, the base for the box yeah so it's an intermediate frame that um, uh, connects uh, the frame of the truck and the box itself yeah and uh, the the trick is uh, to make it as stable as possible uh, so uh, the torsion forces of the truck are not transmitted to the box yeah so it's uh, uh, it stays uh, solid and uh, uh, no forces act on the box itself yeah and uh, to um, prepare the the truck for the marriage yeah we install the um, the special brackets with the uh, rubber dampers that still allow for uh, a certain torsion of the frame yeah so you can uh, still um, have distortion for the off-road yeah so the um, the wheels are touching the ground as um, as much time as possible yeah and you uh, get good traction and there's on a on a six meter box that's we talk about our project on a six meter box we probably have six of those uh, yeah depending on the uh, length of the um, uh, truck it's either eight or six exactly yeah. and uh, there is nothing like it's always there's two ways out there how you do it i mean people in expedition mm -hmm. vehicles they know i don't know the english word one is with like a whip like a whip thing yeah, so that's the very very flexible one mm -hmm. but uh, this one for for the truck what's in there and then the weight and everything this is the perfect solution mm -hmm. and i can say we drove five years in our truck with exactly the kind of the same system yeah, yeah, and we it. never had any issues uh, it was really nice mm -hmm. so i yeah. think this is the way to go the other way of course is more flexible you can say that that's definitely true mm -hmm. but it's nothing is tied together like you see this subframe and the frame and they even i see you have a rubber in between right uh, yeah that's for the noise exactly <laughs> we had that isabella and me Isabella Nick is, is nodding next to me. Uh, when we were driving off-road all the time, it did like clum, mm -hmm. clum. Uh, mm -hmm. That means that frame on frame is, is doing movement here. We won't have that because there's rubber in between, but still flexible enough to go really heavy off-road. Off um, so yeah, I think it's a good solution. Yeah, also it's stable on the highway, yeah, because when you are driving a hundred and you have uh, five tons of weight uh, on the truck and you are doing a sharp turn, uh, you don't want the box to wobble too much. Yeah, exactly. It's so, dangerous, yeah, to say the least. Yeah. <laughs> so now you mentioned something that's really important to people out there, the weight. So again, we have a six meter box on ours and you, you talked about weight. So what's, what's an empty box? Like, let's start there. What's an empty box six meters weight for people who want to maybe mm -hmm. just build it themselves? How much weight? we? Talk there. Uh, yeah, five tons on average. That depends on the layout. And, Except, uh, but yeah, so there are nuances to it. Yeah. Average. Okay, five tons average. Do you know how much weight my ton my truck has right now? Yeah. Also five, six. Yeah. Something like that. So we are at eleven, and then you have to calculate all the diesel, which is in my case five hundred kilos uh -huh. liters. Uh -huh. Then you have, in my case, we were going to have eight hundred liters. We have two tanks of four hundred for fresh water. Uh -huh. That's another ton, so to speak, and then all the interiors and stuff. So we calculate, we come to 16 tons, or F, no, 14 tons. Uh, 14 uh, maximum, I think, yeah. Maximum 14 full, with us full mm -hmm. on board, two yeah. dogs, Matteo and Isabella. Mm -hmm. So, and then registration, that's gonna happen for people out there who wanna do this. We have a 20 ton chassis right now, but when we register the truck first, it's gonna be registered as a camper uh, truck yeah. in Germany, in my yeah. case. And then we registered at 16 tons. So why do we not say 15, just in case we want to have a motorcycle, right, or something? Uh, yeah, it's possible. So uh, apart from uh, the limitations on the road, yeah, because some roads are lim uh, limited. 
to a certain weight. Okay. So there is no problem. And yeah, I guess you can imagine how our truck looks like. We're gonna show you a little bit more inside. So now we are in our truck with Dimitri. And yeah, did we did we order the right thing, Dimitri? Yeah, it looks like. So you have the steering wheel, uh, two, <laughs> uh, two monitors. Yeah, it looks quite complete. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, we have uh, everything that our old truck had plus more and it's uh, a little bit more comfortable. And on the back, the important thing for us was we have our son Matteo now on board. So this is already a little prepared. Um, yeah, Isabella and me, you see this bench here. It's our back seat. Matteo's going to sit here. The dogs are going to be laying here when we drive. We uh, ordered this particularly to have more space for Matteo. But uh, we're gonna get a crawl through and uh, yeah, there behind here, you can see maybe behind this one, there's about 19 centimeters more space to the wall. And uh, Isabella and me decided, well, we just remove that thing in order to have more space. So about an hour later, I found this right tool. <laughs> and let's try it. And open it. So we have about six of those. So hello guys, I show you how it is in the end. So what we figured out is Mercedes as a whole, probably another version of truck. But then we put those back. The cabin builder will cut this and make it nice. Yeah, this will be straight. I'm gonna fix it, put the screws back in. And now we have much more space here. About, this was about 18 centimeters. And that's good for the doggies and for Matteo. Prepared. So here's gonna be a crawl through, right? Um, yeah, so you'll have an opening in the rail wall of the cab that's connected with a flexible bellow um, with a module and um, uh, the door uh, in the module to connect the, the two spaces yeah the flexible bellow also allows um, uh, to for travel of the box against the driver cap yeah so it's um, which is important when you go off-road yeah exactly yeah. Okay, cool. We are still thinking about having Matteo behind me will not be so much space, uh, but we ordered the windows here, like you can see on both sides. And Matteo will probably sit behind Isabella. We have the belts, three point belts uh, on each side and in the middle for extra passengers for the belly. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're gonna think of some solution to close the hole, the walkthrough that somebody can sit here. And the doggies, like you know from our videos, they will sit right here and follow us all over the world. Yeah, thank you, Dimitri. It is a pleasure working with Krug XP now. So it's official since a couple of videos. We love it. We can't wait for the final product. If you want to meet Dimitri, if the show is happening, Aldrat Abenteuer, Abenteuer Aldrat, sorry, that's the name, mm -hmm. is going to happen. We're going to probably, hopefully, if it's happening, introduce our truck to some people this weekend. And uh, yeah, see you when we see you. And yeah, have a good journey wherever you are. Yeah, I'm gonna do a tour in German. We have subtitles right now. We also gonna do a tour in German about the Rhino project. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can show you a little bit more of the inside of some boxes and yeah, stay tuned. Krug, you can design either fully individually, depending on your wallet, I think and uh, or you take the standards he's pretty good <laughs> in explaining what standard we have another video out there where it's going to come about the project rhino we're not going to talk about it in this video but this is also a nice project for people who have a 7.5 ton license and they don't want to do the license they can start like th there and the good part in krug is they prepare everything already i understood it that you can go more like you can have a second water tank you can have more battery it's all flexible, but mm -hmm. if you want to stay until under 7.5 tons, you need to have the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Good talk. Thank you, Vlad, for putting this up on a 
on a pallet. So here we have our mattress, coffee maker, television, uh, dishwasher, the net module, uh, what is it, router and antenna. And this is amazing, our compost toilet. There we go. So next time I see this stuff in my truck, woohoo!